We have seen the first part of this lecture how we can put different components together and some of these components represent high impedance at certain frequencies for example um, uh, the inductance represents very high impedance at high frequency represents low impedance at low frequencies and so on and this gives rise to what we call filters and filters is simply um, a two-port network which selects certain type of certain frequencies and then suppresses the others for example, um, we can, a network can have many different, or a filter can have many different forms, but maybe one of them would be something like this, where you have an input signal put here, Vn, and then you collect the signal at the output here, V out. And the, the, the purpose of the filter, which is, which is this part here, is simply to allow certain frequency components to go through while blocking the others. So your signal, your, your source may contain uh, many frequencies may contain a band of frequencies. It's not really sinusoidal uh, per se. It can be um, a Gaussian source. It has many frequencies in its Fourier transform. And you want the output only to contain certain frequencies or you want some specific frequencies to be uh, suppressed. So this is what gives rise to the concept of filter. And a filter usually, one possible way of doing it is to have um, an impedance which is frequency dependent in series or in parallel with a resistor and then by doing that we can select certain frequencies and remove other types of frequencies later in this course we'll cover the part the uh, the the the, um, the part of the op amp and in the op amp we'll be talking about uh, active filters these filters that require some sources while here the, the, the filters we are addressing in this part are really all passive filters. They do the filtering without any external source. So here we have the famous voltage divider circuit that we have seen so many times before used as a filter. So you can see here we have um, a frequency dependent impedance in series with the resistance and we apply the source uh, between these two terminals and then we pick the output between these two terminals and voltage division still holds in phasors so V out will be equal to Vn multiplied by Z over Z plus R and this creates what we call here the voltage gain it's not going to be a gain here in this case because we don't have an amplifier as we'll be using later, later we'll be using amplifiers or we're using ob amps or transistors and this ratio can be greater than 1, so V out or V in can be greater than 1. What we'll try to, what we'll, we call it here voltage gain, but it's not really a gain, but we'll still use that notation. It is the ratio between the output voltage to the input voltage. And from the voltage division uh, ratio, it is Z over Z plus R. Now, this quantity has a magnitude and a phase. It's a, it's a ratio, but it's a complex quantity because it's some of the, the, the some of the frequencies will get shifted, shift in phase. So uh, if we are interested only to know the magnitude of voltage division, we take the modulus of both sides as done here. So this gives us modulus of Z over Z plus R. And if I divide numerator and denominator by Z, I get 1 over 1 plus R over Z. So you can see here if Z has a very large value, say it goes to infinity, this term becomes zero and then the gain that we have is one. If Z is very, is very small, is close to, very close to zero value, then this term becomes too big and the, the AV will approach zero. So you can see that the value of the voltage gain here or the ratio between the output to the input voltage is proportional to the modulus of Z. And so, and, and Z is also a function, a, a frequency dependent quantity because Z can be an inductor, it can be a capacitor, it can be a combination of inductors and capacitors and resistors as well. But here in this case, the modulus of the ratio between the output and the in is proportional to the modulus of the impedance. This is another way to use a voltage divider to create a filter. Here, we, we really take the output across the resistor, not across the impedance Z, the variable impedance Z. And, and we apply the input voltage between these two terminals. Then in this case, we can define, define the voltage gain uh, ratio as V out over V in, as we said earlier. So it's from voltage division, it's R over R plus Z, because we assume here that this is open circuit. 
or it's connected to a very high impedance that does not really affect our calculations. We do exactly the same thing. This quantity is complex. And the, the, the angle of this quantity is simply telling us what is the phase difference or what is the phase shift applied to Vn to create V out at that frequency. If, I'm, if I care only about the magnitude, the strength of the signal, then I should take the modulus of both sides as done here. And then if I divide numerator and denominator by R, I end up with this quantity. Now, if Z is large, so it, it's, it's large at, say, at, lar at it has certain large value at certain frequency bands, then the numer denominator becomes too big, and then this quantity becomes too small. If Z is small, then this term becomes negligible, and the ratio is effectively 1. So you can see here that the gain, the ratio between the output to the input, the modulus, of course, here, is inversely proportional to the modulus of the impedance. And this impedance, we can control its value for different frequencies. Uh, it can be an inductor, very high impedance at high frequency, very low impedance, low frequency. Or it can be a capacitor, very low impedance at high frequency, very high impedance at low frequency. Or it can be a combination of both of them. So here we see different type of possibilities for this impedance Z. And there are so many other possibilities, really. Uh, the first one is to use this Z as simply an inductor. But we know the inductor has an impedance of G omega L. Then its impedance is simply linear with frequency. So frequency increases, the impedance increases. In infinity, the impedance of the inductor is infinity, so it represents open circuit. While at zero frequency, the impedance of the inductor is zero. It represents short circuit. So this is one possibility. This can be used to create high bus filter or low bus filter depending whether we sample the signal across the inductor or across the resistor. The same thing happens for the capacitor. We know that the impedance of the capacitor is 1 over j omega c, or modulus of the impedance is 1 over omega c. So at zero frequency, this term is infinity, because the impedance, the capacitor represents open circuit. Then the, the impedance represented by the capacitor really is infinite at dc. While at very high frequency, when I take a sufficiently high frequency, omega c becomes a big number, and 1 over omega c will give us 0, very close to 0. So in infinity, it ideally is 0, but at high frequency, it's very close to 0. Again, this can be used to create high pass filters or low pass filters, depending on whether I sample the signal or the output signal across the resistor or across the capacitor. I can use also different types of combination. We talked about this combination before. This is a series LC resonance circuit. We agreed there is a specific frequency at which these two cancel out and the effective impedance is zero. So here, if you calculate the impedance of this one, it's G omega L minus G over omega C, or the modulus will be one omega L minus one over omega C. This one here at zero frequency will give you infinity because of this omega here. At infinity frequency, it will give you infinity. And there, are, there is a certain frequency at which these two will cancel out. So it will give you zero. So this is how the impedance looks like. It's infinity at zero. It goes down to zero at certain frequency. And then it goes to infinity again at infinity. So um, this is, again, we can use this one to create band pass filters or band stop filters, depending on the selection of L and C. We talked about this circuit. I'm, I mentioned it probably earlier. It's called the parallel LC circuit or a tank circuit. And in this one here, uh, as we agreed, there is some specific frequency at which these two will cancel each other out. And then you end up with an open circuit. So uh, if you, this is the admittance of this one is uh, 1 over G omega L. The admittance of this one is G omega C. So when you sum the two admittances, you get, uh, you get uh, G omega C plus 1 over G omega L. And when you divide, you get the inverse of the admittance to get the impedance, you get this term. And here I'm showing the modulus of that term here. So the modulus of the impedance between these two, these two terms is given by this one. Of course... At infinity, at infinity, the denominator becomes infinite because of this term, and you get zero. At zero, this term will result in infinity, okay? This term will result in, a, in, a, in an infinite denominator, and then you get zero as, as well here. So, um, so in infinity, you get zero impedance, so it represents short circuit. At zero, because of this term, okay, 
as, sorry, this one here, because this omega here at zero, this one over zero will give you infinity. So the whole denominator becomes infinite, and then you get zero as well. But at specific frequency, at one specific frequency, omega c cancels out one over omega l. This frequency is given by one over square root l c. In this case, the whole denominator will be zero, and then you get an infinite impedance. So this is how the impedance looks like. It is zero at dc. It goes to infinity at the resonance frequency, and then it goes to zero again at the infinity frequency. Again, we can use this one to create band stop filters or band bus filters, whether we take the output across the resistor or across this parallel LC circuit. Okay, let's have an example here. We have a circuit. Um, it has a voltage source. Uh, there is a resistor of 50 ohm, an inductor 159 micro Henry, a capacitor 159 picofarad. And we'd like to determine the frequency at which the input impedance is real. So if you, if you assume that you can change the frequency of your source, so at every frequency you have a certain value of Zn, certain input impedance represented by this circuit. But at one specific frequency, this the circuit the, the source sees only a real impedance. In other words, the current and the voltage will be in phase. So we'd like to determine this frequency. Of course, we can write the expression for the impedance, and then we try to set the condition that will cancel out um, the imaginary part. So the impedance here is 50 plus J omega L minus J over omega C. So this is the input impedance R plus J omega L plus 1 over J omega C or minus J over omega C. I can take J out. And then for this to be real, as we agreed earlier, this term has to cancel out. So this means that at that specific frequency, which we call it the resonance frequency of that LC circuit, the, mag the magnetic uh, energy and the electric energy will cancel each other out. Uh, and then uh, you have this omega naught L minus 1 over omega, omega naught C is equal to 0, or omega naught equal to 1 over square root LC. And uh, if you put the number, the numbers actually were selected in a, in a, in a certain way to give a certain answer. So uh, 159, 159, I can take this one out of the square root. 10 to the minus 6, 10 to the minus 12, this will give us 10 to the minus 18. It comes out as 10 to the minus 9. It goes to the numerator as 10 to the power 9. So 10 to the power 9 divided by 159. This is the answer that we're going to be getting here. So this answer is really 6.289 by 10 to the power 6 radian per second. We usually, when we have a, 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 an answer for frequency, we try to convert it to hertz. So you have to divide this number by 2 pi. And again, the numbers are organized so that this term is exactly equal to 2 pi. So when you divide these two, you get uh, the frequency should be 10 to the power 6 hertz, or um, it's 1 megahertz. So this is how the impedance looks like at, 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 uh, at 0, at, at DC. The capacitor represents open circuit. The capacitor represents the open circuit, so infinite impedance. At infinity frequency, the inductor represents the open circuit. At this specific frequency, omega naught, which is 6.289 tens to the power 6, which is equivalent to 1 megahertz, you see uh, an input impedance. It does not really go down to 0, it goes down to 50 ohms. So this number here is 50 ohm. Okay, this is the minimum that you get for that part. Okay, let's consider one more example. Um, this, is, this is a circuit, we call it high-pass filter. And um, we would like to determine the ratio between the output voltage, V out, to the input voltage. And we'd like to determine the cutoff frequency if R is equal to 0.2 mega ohm and C is equal to 10 picofarad. Now, why do we call this a high-pass filter? Simply because a DC, if this, if this source has a DC, it's a DC, it's, it does not change with time. The capacitor is open circuit and the output is zero. But at very high frequency, very high frequency, 1 over J omega C will give us practically zero. So this becomes short circuit. And then the output follows the input. So at very high frequency, the output will follow the input. At very low frequency, around DC or close to DC, the capacitor is open circuit and then the, the output is virtually equal to zero. So um, the cutoff frequency, so if I, if I want to draw the, maybe for, for a good, if I want to draw the, the response here, 
So the ratio between V out to V in as a modulus, it will look something like this. It is zero here, and then it goes up to a big value of one. This is the modulus, modulus of AV. Cutoff frequency is usually determined at the at the at the frequency at which we reach um, uh, one over square root two of the big value. The big value here is one. The maximum ratio is one. So we're looking for the frequency at which the ratio, the modulus of the ratio between the output voltage to the input voltage is really one over square root two. This is this is for a voltage gain. This is what the case we have here. So we, we write the expression for the voltage divider and then we impose the condition that we would like to have the ratio between V out to V in equal to one over square two. In, in other words, the output in modulus will have an amplitude which is 0 0.707 of the input voltage at that specific frequency. So the ratio between the output to the input, because we are taking the output from across the resistor, is going to be R over R plus 1 over J omega C. We can simply um, take J, make it minus J, and then divide numerator and denominator by R to end up with this term. So this is a voltage ratio. It is 1 over 1 minus G over omega CR. So for every frequency, you put the frequency here, and then the modulus of this will give you the amplitude of the output, and the phase will tell you how much is the output shifted from the input. Of course, remember that I can see the right here that V out is equal to A V V in. Then the angle, the angle of the voltage ratio is added to the angle of the input to create a phase shift for the output. It's still sinusoidal with the same frequency, but it's shifted, and its amplitude, of course, affects. So the modulus of this ratio, as we agreed earlier, it is 1. The modulus of this term is the modulus of the numerator divided by the modulus of the denominator. So it's 1 over square root 1 plus 1 over omega rc all squared. My, as I explained to you, the definition of the cutoff is the frequency at which this ratio is 1 over square root 2, or the, the, ratio, the, the value of the output voltage amplitude is 0 0.707 of the value of the input voltage amplitude. So in order to make this 1 over square root 2, if I equate this one here to 1 over square root 2, okay, I have here already 1, so this term must be equal to 1 in order to get this term. So I have to equate 1 over omega rc to 1. Okay, so if you equate 1 over omega rc to 1, you get that the cutoff frequency, now I am going to talk about specific frequency, it is 1 over rc. r is given, is 0.2 mega ohm, so 0.2 10 to the power 6. c is given, it's 10 picofarad, so 10 multiplied by 10 to the minus 12. Now we multiply these numbers and they simplify, these two here will go to the numerator 10 to the power 6, this one here will result in 2, so you get 5, 10 to the power 5 radian per second. If you divide this number by 2 by, whereby 3.14, you end up that the cutoff frequency is 80 kilohertz. So at this 80 kilohertz frequency, the output will have an amplitude which is 0 0.707 of that of the input. Okay, and of course there is a phase shift, it's going to be exactly sinusoidal, uh, it's going to be shifted, so if the input looks something like this, okay, the output will look like a weaker version and maybe shifted a little bit. We don't know, I did not calculate the fish shift, but it will be weaker, it's not the same amplitude, and shifted a little bit. So here it's gonna be 0.707. If this is one, this is 0.707, okay? So uh, so this example, this is a very example for an a passive filter. Later we'll talk about active filters, and active filters will require transistors, or require op amp circuits, or require some sort of a, of a component that require an external uh, voltage source.